In this jam, we are going to solve uh, the Lord's Supper. The combination of bread and wine mathematically glorifies Jesus. Start off with some imagery here. So I am a visual person. I love uh, imagery. And um, here is um, just a few uh, pictures uh, relating to the Lord's Supper. Bread and wine, two elements by divine ordinance um, to the glory of Jesus equals eight at eight. This do in remembrance of me. Wow. The Lord's Supper, excuse me, um, bread and wine is the combination and uh, this is such a famous famous and um, you know widely <laughs> practiced uh, ordinance of Jesus uh, the famous painting the Last Supper is the institution of this ordinance by the Lord Jesus saying do this in remembrance of me bread and wine so Let's look at this divinely ordained pair in the mind of God. It's the mathematical glory of Jesus. God who declares the end from the beginning. God who created the Hebrew language before he even created bread and wine. That is what you have to understand. The Hebrew words, um, the Hebrew language existed even before God spoke the universe into existence using Hebrew. And so Hebrew existed for bread and wine even before the bread and wine themselves, um, you know, the com all the physical components that make up bread and wine were created. So, to the root of all things, the Hebrew language, God's holy word. Bread and wine, this is by divine ordinance. Look at this perfect pair. Here they are. This is the one and only three glyph root for bread. And this um, down here is the one and only three glyph root for wine. You go to the roots. The noun wine is yayin, uh, but the root is this right here. And uh, you can find this for yourself by digging on uh, the Blue Letter Bible. Watch this. We'll just do it together right here. So here's where you can find the word wine right here, Strong's H3196. But where does it come from? What? This is the noun, where is the root? Ah, it says from a, a root. Aha, uh -huh. well, what is the root? Um, Jacenius gives us the answer uh, that it is right here. This is the root, okay, right there. Yon. Ya yeah, own, yeah, something like that. But that's the root right there. So you have to dig to go to the deepest level possible, the roots, the three lift roots of everything that God created um, to see the glory. So look at this combination of bread and wine. And let's do the math on them. It equals. Um, exactly 144, which is a three-digit all-factor eight number that divides by eight perfectly. It's in fact the perfect square of 12, exceedingly glorious number that glorifies G's equals eight at eight. Three digits, all-factor eight, divides by eight and 12 and 24, just like G's equals eight at eight. Remember, all-factor eight, every single digit is a factor of eight, including any zeros, 144. So bread and wine, and look at the glory of that number 144. It's literally, um, it's literally 18 eighths, or a double of the good old, you know, three by three grid of eight, 72 plus 72. Triple eights in all directions here, and then repeat it again for highest emphasis. This is to the glory of Jesus equals 888. Jesus equals 888, um, and uh, again, 144 is 12 times 12. Jesus equals 12 times the 12th prime uh, doubled. So, now that we know we're looking at a pair from the mind of God, bread and wine, this is the Lord's Supper. And folks, you've got to, you go as um, as literal and as physical as you can in all of these things. So, the fact that the Lord's Supper is composed of precisely two elements, 
bread and wine. This is celebrated in churches all over the world um, in every language. You can read for yourself the Lord's Supper in Matthew 26, verse 14, um, and what it symbolizes, the wine symbolizes um, the blood of the new covenant. Jesus declares exactly what it all is right here in Matthew chapter 26. I encourage you to read it for yourself all over again. <clears throat> and uh, the bread symbolizes his body, which is broken for you. And um, I encourage you to read that again. So, um, and, but he spoke of these words in um, Hebrew, and more importantly, uh, just astonishingly, is that he created these Hebrew roots even before the uh, first Lord's Supper was ever created. Consider that bread and wine, um, you know, have been, we solved the, the um, oh my goodness, bread and wine and bread and water in another module, but this was a very common, um, you know, pair all through history for people to eat bread and uh, drink wine. So, divine pair, let's look at more glories here. How we how these are knit together mathematically. These letters make 16. This is 8 exactly. So the blue letters make 24 perfectly, which is 888, 888. And then these letters in gold make 120, uh, pardon me, which is uh, an all factor 8 number. So the three letters in gold are knit together to make an all-factor-8 number. And then the three letters in blue make 24, which is an all-factor-8 number, and then both divide by 8. And they make this perfect total of an all-factor-8 number that divides by 8 perfectly. So, um, the same God, Jesus, that created the Hebrew roots, also created numbers. And he ultimately created all numbers um, and the entire Hebrew language to glorify himself um, mathematically in everything that he instituted in everything that you read in the Holy Scripture it's all knit together to mathematically glorify him okay wow and um, I love the fact additionally that the there's another nail in the coffin that uh, the first letter of bread um, is 30 and then the last letter of wine is 50 so these themselves um, make a combination of 80. You see that? The book ends, as it were. 30 plus 50 is 80. This here is 40, which divides by 8 by itself. But um, just, just look at how strongly knit together these are. The book ends, the green letters make 80 perfectly. The glory of G equals 8. Um, then this in blue is 16, double 8. This is 8, exactly at center of the word bread. And then this is our beloved 40, which is um, 8 times 5. So, divine pair from the mind of God, knit together in every way. Bread and wine. You universally go to the three glyph roots in all the word of God um, as it was spoken. Um, through the mouth of all his prophets and the Lord Jesus himself. The words of the Lord Jesus, incidentally, are the most mathematically glorious words uh, ever spoken or written in the entire universe. The red letters that we have today were originally spoken in Hebrew, and we are solving hundreds upon hundreds into the thousands of gems from the mouth of Jesus to his own mathematical glory that he spoke in Hebrew. And uh, same thing all through the scripture. You go to the three glyph roots of the Hebrew language and you combine them to see the truth of God and the mathematical brilliance of God. And this man, this one man, as portrayed in this portrait, this one man right here, God incarnate, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the fact that he was God means that he lived a flawless life. He was in total control of everything that was going on. He was perfect in his words and in all of his deeds. 
That means that he had to speak mathematically gloriously in Hebrew. And that is exactly what we are finding in the most astonishing ways. Just one example for you is the first words that he spoke to all of his disciples, um, which is, follow me. Well, in Hebrew, the two roots you speak in Hebrew, uh, to say, follow me, is um, literally, walk after me. Halak acher. And those two roots make exactly 264, which is nothing other than 88 times 3, a triple of 88s, to the glory of himself. And Jesus said that to all 12 of his disciples, presumably, or at least uh, as we find recorded in the examples of the calling of many of them. And the word disciple in Hebrew, this will blow your mind, the word disciple is 74. And Jesus had 12 of them. Well, what's 12 times 74? 888 exactly. Jesus had 12 disciples. The root of the word disciple in Hebrew equals 74. Lamad. Disciple. Learner. He had 12 of them. So, 12 disciples is 12 times 74, which equals 888 exactly. That is to his own mathematical glory. Are you now seeing how this one man, Jesus, was literally in total control of everything that was happening all around him. He was in total control of the entire scene. Folks, it would be like the equivalent of, um, you know, the infinite equi equivalent of a movie director like Steven Spielberg um, being in total control of the entire cast all around him, and yet he is in the play. He is the shining star in the whole scene all the time. That is the reality. The reality is that Jesus um, was in total control of everything that happened. <laughs> Absolutely. And just keep watching just all the, the God who declares the end from the beginning. The Bible says that God is... Um, the one who declares the end from the beginning. The story was written from the foundation of the world. The book of Revelation makes that very clear. That Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. That means the entire story was written in advance and is literally playing out in exact detail by God's sovereignty. Okay, so bread and wine from the mind of God, the Lord's Supper. Um, there's countless imagery related to this in one simple web search, so you can get a feel for just how um, substantial and epic this, inst this um, institution is all over the world in every form that it is carried out in churches and homes and the hearts of believers and Christians all over the world. Um, hallelujah. In stained glass, my goodness. The institution of the Lord's Supper. Bread and wine, there are two elements to his own mathematical glory. God pairs the three glyph roots of Scripture all through, you know, to mathematically glorify himself. And uh, this institution,